Hey, fasting friends. So I wanted to chat with you about obstacles that you and I face when we're doing a prolonged fast because it's a reality that we just have to address. So I'm gonna first talk about the things that I personally struggle with when I do a prolonged fast because I'm human and I am not perfect and I have issues just like you. So for me personally, when I'm doing a prolonged fast, my number one obstacle is actually a lack of sleep. And that's due to the fact that I have a low body fat percentage. And for a female that's under 15% body fat, it's extremely hard to get any sleep at all if you're doing a prolonged fast. So I knew that coming into this and I just kind of planned on it. And sure enough, last night I might have gotten 30 minutes of sleep, maybe. So that was kind of tough, but um, I still decided to lay there, keep my eyes closed, focus on good breathing. And I knew that even just allowing my body to rest, even if it wasn't in a full sleep, was going to still get a lot of the benefits that we get by allowing our body to, to take a rest. So that's number one for my obstacle. Number two is having to feed my children because of course they need to eat. And so fixing three meals a day and smelling it and seeing it, touching it, oh my gosh. Like I kind of feel like a dog you know how like you open a package and a dog will just come running into the room? Yeah, that's kind of the, the place I'm at when I'm having to deal with making them food. I'm like, I just got to get out of here. This is not good for me. Um, and if you have the opportunity to just avoid food altogether in kitchens, just do it. Um, the other thing for me, my third one is just the hunger waves that come. And today has actually been fantastic. I'm like 44 hours in by now. And... I feel pretty great, but yesterday it was really tough. Like I had some serious, like I was never feeling like I'm going to break my fast, but like I had some like gnarly stomach pain and in burning because my stomach's like, feed me, feed me, feed me. And I did not give into it. Um, that's such a good time to go ahead and pick up your snake juice and drink it or get a cup of tea. Um, it's just really good to just allow yourself to realize your body wants food, you're not going to feed it. You got a plan. And by you not giving in, it's going to go recruit those fat stores that you're trying to get rid of. And it's going to eliminate toxins in your body and really armor your immune system. And that's what we're after. That's what I'm after right now in this long fast is just to strengthen my immune system overall and just detox any other junk I got going on. So another obstacle that a lot of people face, and so now we're going to kind of talk about general obstacles that I've had a lot of my clients tell me this is my struggle. So one is emotional waves. And this is due to the fact that of all addictions in this world, a food addiction is actually the most difficult to overcome. And it's because we can never just walk away from food and be like, done with that, never touching it again. <laughs> we'll die. We have to have food in our lives for the rest of our lives at some point or another. It's not like alcohol or cigarettes or even caffeine that we can just go, I'm staying away from these certain places and I'm just avoiding these certain things. This is a part of our daily life. So it's very important that you reestablish what food is and how to properly fuel your body along with understanding how to enjoy it but not overindulge. And doing a three-day fast is by and far the best way to break a food addiction because when you start coming back to food nice and slow, you're going to appreciate it more than you ever have. And you'll probably be willing to eat things that you never have because you get that hungry. And, and once you start doing that, like intermittent fasting or OMAD following your long fast, you just be cautious of what you're choosing to put in your body. Because again, you don't want to start creating all of these bad habits that you just kicked. You just got rid of some of these vices like sugar, maybe caffeine, whatever your vices were with food just carbs in general, simple crap carbs. You've kicked those. So be really intentional about your food and what you're eating when you come back to it. It will help so much. Um, the, next thing I, the next thing I want to touch on is menstrual cycle. If you're a female and you're having your menstrual cycle, it is not a great time to jump into a prolonged fast. It's not that you cannot fast when you're on your cycle. It's just not ideal because your cycle for menstrual, it's, it's trying to detox your body. It's letting go. It's cleansing. And it's just something that when we are in the middle of that and then we jump into a prolonged fast, often it just ceases right away. And so you don't get the full cleansing effect. So it's much better to wait till the end of your cycle and then jump into your prolonged fast. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is headaches. 
because headaches are very, very common. And a lot of it is just food addiction. A lot of it is sugar addiction, caffeine addiction. You're letting go of things that you have been consuming for days, months, weeks, probably years. So just recognize that. So the things you can do to help your headache, obviously snake juice, that's a big one. Um, essential oils are huge. So getting some essential oils and meeting with somebody that knows about that, that is excellent with that. So you can, I can give you her information if you want to get together with her about essential oils. Um, and so doing things like that and then also doing things like a detox bath is a great way to just sweat out the toxins that are that are kind of running around and they're in your blood system and they're all through your body and they're trying to get out and they're like, ugh. Your body will really push a ton of toxins out through your skin. So it's really good to just let it out. And so that's a great way to do that. Um, another thing I want to discuss is the fact that some people get what's called the keto flu. And it's literally like you get almost like full of blown flu symptoms. Like you might get fatigue, headaches, puking, diarrhea. And they're calling me going, oh my gosh, am I dying? Like what's happening? My body's like revolting against me. You're detoxing hardcore and you literally have such a wave of toxins entering your body and going into your bloodstream that you are having to, your body is like in crisis mode and it's called a healing crisis. So it's not something to be alarmed about, but if you, if you're that level, realize that that's a sign that your body has been extremely toxic and you've just been living with that. So this is letting it go. It can take anywhere from one to three days to get through it, but I really encourage you stick with it. I know it's tough when you're sick to not be like, forget it. I'm just going to eat. But I'm telling you, you're not going to overcome these bugs and these bad, you know, things you've got built up in your gut flora if you don't. So it's really crucial you stick to it. Um, lastly, I want to talk about the fact that a lot of you might get to a certain place. Every one of us is different and you're going to go, I'm done. I can't do it. This is too hard. Not worth it. And part of the reason why we get in this funky mentality is because we live in a world full of instant gratification. Everything we want is just available right there. We just buy it with a credit card. We just finance it, whatever. I mean, you can finance anything now. You can get anything you want the very next day, sometimes that very day. It is not that way with our bodies. It did not take you overnight or even a week for your body to get a disease. It didn't take you that long to get overweight. Any health issue that you're dealing with, you have accumulated it as the years have gone by. So fasting one time is not just going to wipe it all away and make you be like, oh, I'm perfect and brand new now. It's going to take time. Just like it took time to build those bad habits, it's going to take time to build your new good habits. So be kind to yourself, but realize this is a new process you need to get yourself on and just stick to some type of a fasting plan so that you can rid your body of all of these terrible toxins and disease that you're dealing with and eventually come to a place of complete wellness. It's, it's such a wonderful thing. And so a couple of things you can be doing that will help you when you hit an obstacle. Number one, do some deep breathing practices. Just honestly sitting, closing your eyes, really breathing deep can just help kind of center you, calm you down, make you realize this is worth it, realize your purpose for your fast. Um, the next thing is read or watch something that is fasting related, something that is health related. It will keep you in that mindset and go, I know what I'm doing. I need to stick to this. It's very important. Um, go on a walk or go take a yoga class. And even better, do it with a fasting buddy. So if you have somebody locally that you can connect with and say, hey, like, can we meet for a cup of tea? Or like, can we go for a walk? I just need some support right now. Like I'm struggling right now is hard. I got to get out of my house. Got to get away from the kitchen, whatever. You know, have that support system there. It will help so much to overcome an obstacle. Um, you know, journaling, writing down what's going on, just letting go of your experience and just going, I'm just going to put it all out here. This is how I'm feeling. And I'm going to be honest. Um, another thing you can do is nap. If you're tired, like you, your body needs to rest. You don't need to go crazy. So if you feel like I need to sleep and you can, like if I have the opportunity to sleep today in this afternoon, I'm going to do it. If my body's like, yeah, go take a nap. I'll be there. <laughs> so you just got to realize these different things you can do that are practices that will help you overcome these obstacles. And 
you're not in this alone. You may have an obstacle that I didn't even touch on. If you do and you want to talk about it, put it in the comments. I will be happy to talk to you about that obstacle and maybe ways that you can overcome it. So we're in this together and I'm proud of you guys. Stick with it and keep on fasting.